Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. I apologize for sort of the delay in between posts and I promise to do a much better job. This is an opportune time to talk about colon cancer strategies because March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. I wanted to talk about strategies in people who are at average risk. In other words, people who have no genetic syndromes, etc., which is a different subject. As you can see from this graph, the incidence of colon cancer increases as we age. There's a sharper uptick into the 40s, uh, which is what accounts for the moving of start of age of screening to 45. So this is an important graph. The rationale for screening for colon cancer or looking for colon cancer, in fact, really what you're looking for is the precursor or something that starts before colon cancer, because that's really where we need to focus our efforts are, not colon cancer itself. So colon polyps are like little growths in the colon that progress from what's called adenomas, which are smaller, less than eight millimeters. So if you think about it, they're very, very small. And then they progress from that to becoming cancer as they grow in size. They can occur in about 30% of men and 20% of women. And uh, the progression you can see on this slide that I have. There are many benefits of screening because what you're really trying to do is find the early stage of colon cancer, which are these adenomas, take them out, and then that prevents all the problems that come with colon cancer and uh, uh, associated morbidity and problems of treatment, etc. For any test to meet effectiveness, it's assessed in the uh, there's a uh, in public health literature, it's looked at in costs in term per life and colon cancer is very easy in the sense that it, by preventing colon cancer the cost cost of year of life saved is about 50,000 you know there are many others that you need much more number of dollars to be spent so it's a use in other words it's a cost effective test the recommendation is to start at the age of 45 but a good assessment needs to start even earlier uh, because there are some of these genetic syndromes so whenever a family member or yourself go in, a good assessment should start really at the age of 20 when you first have an adult uh, visit with the doctor. Things that you should keep in mind is, is there any personal history of colon polyps? Is there any family history of colon cancer? Is there a personal history of colon cancer? Is there any personal history of radiation to the abdomen? Does one have inflammatory bowel disease? All of these increase one's own risk of colon cancer, so those need to be kept in mind. There are other factors which include dietary factors, a diet that's uh, higher in red meat, lower in plant-based, seems to be uh, a factor, obesity, alcohol over a particular amount, and smoking all seem to raise the risk of colon cancer. The age to start screening, according to United States Preventive Service Task Force and other societies, is 45. And uh, that's where we would recommend in our practice here. The other question that comes up is still what age should we continue to screen? And I think at least to the age of 75, as long as there's life expectancy at that point of another 10 uh, good quality years. Between 75 to 85, then use that as a guide. Uh, it's also uh, then based on your preference, prior testing, and comorbidities as to when to stop that. There's many options. Uh, the best option is a colonoscopy. There's also a test for blood in the stool. It's called a, a FIT test. And uh, there's also a test called uh, uh, the multi-target DNA testing called Cologuard. CT colography where you can actually inject a little dye and contrast where but you need a full prep and get a CAT scan is an option. Flexible sigmoscopy which is actually a partial look at the colon is an option but that really is uh, gone to the wayside. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of that and this is the uh, slide that has uh, a great majority of the information. Uh, when you look at a colonoscopy it has the highest uh, incidence of sensitivity for colon cancer it has the uh, highest incidence of finding polyps that are less than five millimeters or polyps that are greater than 10 millimeters or even between the six to nine millimeters. So in all of these measures, it's the best test. In terms of 
colon cancer deaths that could be averted, the number is quite high. For the FIT test, which is where you're looking for blood in the stool, the sensitivity for polyps is so low at 7.6 and even uh, in the larger polyps it's about 23%. And sensitivity for colon cancer is only 73%. CT colography is a little higher. And the FIT DNA test, the important thing to know is that the sensitivity for polyps greater than a centimeter as well as smaller polyps is very low. In other words, the Cologuard test or the FIT DNA test is good at finding colon cancer, but not so great at preventing colon cancer uh, as are the, some of these other tests. So keep that in mind. There's also another test that uh, has recently come in in the last few weeks, which is a blood test that shows uh, some sensitivity for detecting colon cancer early, but it's cancer and not the precursors of cancer and uh, that you may uh, find in the news. So in summary, I think some form of looking for colon cancer is important. A colonoscopy seems to be the best way, but certainly if that is not, if one is not a candidate or doesn't want it for whatever reason, any of these other tests uh, are uh, a second best uh, option. So I urge you to uh, think about this. Cancers that are preventable include, you know, skin cancers, colon cancer, breast cancer, cervical cancer, and uh, many others. And the more we look at screening and looking at that, uh, I think uh, one of the few disease, big category of diseases that can affect humans as we age can be prevented. Please feel free to send in any questions and I will continue to try to do this on a regular basis. Thank you.